When words leave scars, the neuroscience of childhood verbal abuse. When we talk about childhood trauma, most people think of physical abuse or neglect. But there's another form, less visible, often dismissed, that cuts just as deep, verbal abuse. A growing body of neuroscience tells us that harsh words don't just hurt feelings, they shape developing brains. When a child is routinely belittled, threatened, shamed, or ridiculed, it wires their brain for fear, not connection. Their threat response system, designed to protect them, goes into overdrive. The world begins to look dangerous even when it's not. Imagine a child flinching at a kind joke or interpreting neutral faces as threatening. That's not oversensitivity, it's neurobiology. The same experience dulls their brain's reward circuitry. Praise, affection, and joy don't feel as good as they should. Over time, this child may struggle to form healthy relationships or believe they're worthy of love. These are not theoretical risks, they're measurable. Children who endure verbal abuse are more likely to face depression, anxiety, addiction, and even suicidal thoughts later in life. Yet, verbal abuse remains largely absent from public discourse and policy. It hides in plain sight, in homes, classrooms, and communities. But it doesn't have to be this way. Prevention starts with awareness. The words we use with children matter. They build up or break down trust, self-worth, and emotional resilience. Clear boundaries and discipline don't require cruelty. Honest correction doesn't have to come at the cost of dignity. Verbal abuse isn't just part of growing up, and it's not harmless, it's preventable. And by eliminating it, we protect brains, futures, and lives. It's time we speak to children in ways that heal, not harm, because the science is clear. Words shape minds. What do you think about this research? Drop us a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more neuroscience news updates.